Now, where I am excited, and I think the industry does need to, uh, the industry is, is craving this need is for the decentralized applications. And fortunately, those are coming to Bitcoin uh, with RSK um, and other similar pro kind of layer two protocols. Because if you think about Bitcoin by itself, it's basically the money and payments. If you take the analogy in our current financial system, there are companies and banks and services and whatnot that allow you to hold money and send and receive it. All right, so Venmo, send and receive. Credit card, send and receive. Uh, bank account, store it. But that's a fraction of our financial system. Then there's all the layers on top of it, such as hedging, trading, um, insurance, uh, all of those financial services. Ironically, I saw back in 2013 and 2014, built on Bitcoin, all centralized, all, I want to call, I hate to use that word centralized, but all with a company holding your funds or being an intermediary. If you wanted to take out a loan or, or issue funds for a loan, there was a company right in the middle of it. It's almost like all of these projects couldn't figure a way of doing it in a trustless, uh, censorship resistant, globally accessible manner, because that's all Bitcoin really had. It was just payments. And so the introduction of DeFi allows us to cut out more of the, the payment, the, the financial stack from the legacy institutions. Whereas if all you have was payments, then all those legacy institutions are going to do the exact same thing they were already doing and put their more centralized alternatives right on top of your decentralized money. And then if you do that, you're, you're then taking the money and putting it in a centralized service because you need that service. You need a loan, you need X, Y, Z, you need insurance. Well, then it's just going to go right back to where we were before. So I'm excited about the, the kind of the DeFi ecosystem because it's taking a bigger chunk out of that, you know, existing uh, large monopoly of, of financial services. Um, and that Bitcoin base layer stuff really didn't solve. And so I, I thank Ethereum for introducing that. And even the tools that are on top of Bitcoin are using Ethereum technology. So RSK, 100% like Ethereum technology, not 100, 99%, but now sitting on top of Bitcoin. Something to, um, I guess, uh, pull away from Bitcoin and more towards uh, Edge Wallet in general um, that I wanted to ask was, um, I guess, whether there's anything uh, that you have in the, that you're working on now or in the immediate future that you're kind of proud of or want to talk about really, essentially, that's going on with Edge. Like, is there anything you're up to that you're kind of, yeah, I don't, I'm not necessarily saying you should, you know, <laughs> give away all the secrets or anything, but uh, is there anything yeah. you kind of wanted to, wanted to mention at all to the listeners out there that's, that's going on that you're super interested in or you're happy about? Got it. Uh, we're a pretty transparent company. We kind of give people, you know, quote unquote roadmap because the roadmap is very, who knows what's going to happen. Crypto is too volatile to actually really predict, hey, we're going to do this in a year, <laughs> right? Our roadmap is like two weeks long, but here are the things that we're interested in. And we want to incorporate definitely DeFi for sure. Like I've used DeFi on the Ethereum chain for my own personal need. And when I say personal need, it's not to play the DeFi casino the way people like, um, uh, bless his heart, uh, Peter McCormick will say. He thinks a DeFi is a gigantic casino, but no, I actually wanted to take out a loan. I didn't want to spend my Bitcoin. I don't want to sell it. I want to take a loan collateralized in Bitcoin. And I had the choice of going to these behemoth companies that will hold my money and actually, you know, I give up control to these, to these companies or I can use DeFi and I chose to use DeFi. Um, I love that I didn't have to give any personal information. My credit score is not affected at all. No one knows that I'm doing this other than whoever I tell. Um, and so uh, that though required multiple steps with multiple apps, right? In order for me to go and actually take out this loan. Um, we want to make that integrated entirely in edge, just a few taps, take out a loan, send dollars right into your bank account, just like that. So that's one of our goals. Definitely. We want to streamline DeFi where it's not like this other app and you've got your wallet here, you got your swap, you swap into the right tokens here. Um, your, your key manager wallet app here. And then the DeFi website here, it's a, giant mess. Um, to me, it's a great proof of concept to know that this stuff works and there's enough liquidity, but now we got to actually vertically integrate that. Right. And that's, that's what I'm excited about from the viewpoint of, we want to get that in not actively being worked on right now, but we're trying to design the different screens. What we think is the good middle ground between the full fledged interface you might see on a full desktop app versus the, the kind of the, uh, minimized, uh, minimum viable product that you would see in a, in a small mobile app. So DeFi for sure, as well, you know, some improvements into the offerings in Bitcoin, 
Um, so we currently don't currently have, for example, batch 32 address support. You can spend to a batch 32 address, but you can't receive into one. So that's current actively in development. It's working. It's in internal testing um, as well because of the fees that are in Bitcoin. You know, it's it, some features that I really, really, really dislike. In all honesty, to me, these are poor. The fact that we need these are very poor user experience, but we just have to deal with it, which are features like RBF and CPFP. So for your audiences that might not be familiar with those features, they're a way to take a transaction that either you've received or you may have sent um, with a specific fee. And when you realize later that, that fee isn't sufficient, maybe the network fees have spiked up, it allows you to broadcast an accelerated version of that transaction. RBF, you're broadcasting almost the same transaction, but with higher fee. CPFP is a way of broadcasting another transaction that will accelerate your original one. So to me, like I'd mentioned, that's the fact that we need it is just terrible user experience. Like whenever have you ever had to do that in, in making a payment? It's like, hmm, I didn't put enough of a fee. Let me do it again. That wasn't enough. Let me do it again. It, that doesn't exist. It's a terrible experience, but admittedly it's better than my transaction stuck. Well, I'm not sure what to do now. So it's, it's the middle ground from really, really, really bad to what I really want. And so hence, you know, it's going to be a feature that is just, it's kind of a necessity in, in actually both uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. And so we're going to be having that. It'll be super simple. One tap, accelerate the transaction and you're good to go. I think that's actually a really good, good idea though, to have that in that simple fashion. I mean, it's something that, um, you know, working some support for BitRefill and, and our companies is like seeing the amount of people who don't understand like, okay, well, I've sent you my Bitcoin, you know, what, where's my product or whatever and it's like well you, you may have done that but it's not getting here anytime soon with that fee <laughs> yeah you basically sent on the slow boat from china yeah you know, so like how do we then amp that boat and like put put some jet thrusters on it yeah you gotta Pretty push much. this button and that's the yeah, thing exactly. if, you, if you can provide a user, user um a situation where it's like hey you know not arrived yet whatever just boom press a button and it's done like that's that's pretty powerful to be able to do that because as you say it's not the easiest for people to understand at the beginning and for myself it's something that you know makes total sense uh, but like for someone who's getting involved or me you know two three years ago whatever it was it was a whole minefield of confusion so, rigmarole. yeah yeah we so, were of so the mindset when we first launched that we didn't even want to show people uh, an option to change fees like our goal is like hey we should choose the right one from the start um having to change a fee in general is still a, already a bad enough user experience um but as blocks got full that just became mandatory by right? people had to be able, given the option to say i care how fast it goes in or i don't care how fast it goes in um but to this day it's a, it's a horrible unsolved problem you know it's people choose a fast fee we, we default them to a high fee people complain when it's expensive we default them to a slower one. People complain because it doesn't confirm. There's just, you can't make everyone happy. And that's probably the number one source of support calls mm. is easily the fee on on chains where the blocks are full, which is Bitcoin and Ethereum. Gotcha. Yeah, I, 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 that, that makes a lot of sense as well. I can expect that. To, uh, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Well, I, um, I think it's probably a good time to, to wrap up as we're coming on to an hour anyway. Um, but I could have could have gone on for many more hours, I can tell you that. Um, that said, it's been, I've really appreciated uh, your time. And it's been awesome to like chat to you and get some insight to, to what you, know, you guys are up to in Edge and um, kind of hearing your story as well. I, I, say, I really I really do appreciate you coming on. It's been, been fantastic. Um, and Thanks well, for having me. Super appreciate being here. Thank you very much. And I say thanks also to anyone who's listened in as well. Um, uh, we, we appreciate you guys. Uh, it allows us to continue talking to people like Paul who are interesting and have a cool story to tell and can give us a lot of interesting information uh, about the world in crypto. So um, yeah, thank you very much. And uh, I say, take care, everyone out there listening. Uh, have an awesome week or day and uh, buy some Bitcoin. See you later. Yep.